Today we'll talk about rest versus soap. We'll spend some time understanding both of them and we'll discuss which one is better or do we really need to compare rest and soap? In this video, we are going to discuss what is a web service. We'll spend some time talking about some practical uses of web services. We'll take a look at different type of web services and then we'll spend time on SOAP. We'll spend some time understanding how REST works. And finally, we'll do a comparison of SOAP and REST. First of all, let us understand what is a web service. A web service is nothing but a piece of software that makes itself available over the internet. It is nothing but a collection of protocols or you can say a standard for exchanging data between different applications or systems. The exchange of this data is preferably in a standard format like JSON or XML. The important aspect of a web service is to provide a service, not necessarily an user interface for humans to consume. So you can say that the web services are meant mostly for other applications or systems. Or to put it in a simple language, a website allows humans to communicate and collaborate using a web browser or maybe a mobile app, whereas a web service allows systems to communicate and collaborate. Now, what are some practical uses of uh, web services? I'm sure all of you are using amazon.com or amazon.co.uk to browse the list of different products. So let us say you are retrieving information about uh, all the TVs of a specific category. You would be using a web service. You would be doing it either through a browser or maybe using a mobile app when you are interacting with the uh, Amazon, for example, but internally, this particular retrieval of information is done using a web service. You can also submit an order to Amazon by going to either their browser or maybe you can do it from a mobile app. So you have different clients like a browser or a, let us say a mobile app to submit some information to provide uh, some information to your uh, service provider. You can also update some information. For example, you can update your account information like phone number, you can change your address or you can place an order. So whenever you are updating something, you are also using a web service in the background. And if you are interested in providing a web service, you can also create your own web services to allow these similar operations on your own website. Let us say you have a, web, have a website that provides some information to uh, to schools or maybe to colleges. Maybe you have created some kind of uh, an alumni network. You can also create these web services to, to allow other people to interact with your website, either through a browser or maybe using some kind of uh, a mobile app. A good example is a mobile app that all of you are using for Amazon, for Facebook, and you have different apps from uh, Google. So when you, whenever you're using Google Maps, you are actually using a web service for interacting with Google servers. And uh, these mobile apps are in most cases using some kind of an API. Now we have different type of uh, web services. Primarily we have SOAP based web services, and then we have REST based web services. So let us now understand both of them, starting with SOAP. So SOAP is nothing but a simple object access protocol. And as the name suggests, it is nothing but a protocol. You can work on almost any internet protocol when you're working with SOAP. You can use HTTP, you can use FTP, you can use MQ, for example. So you can say that SOAP works on variety of uh, protocols. And the thing that you need to be cautious of is that SOAP can only support XML file type. And the SOAP actually supports SSL 
and you can also use WS security, which is enterprise level security. And the way SOAP works is by sending an envelope and that envelope contains the information of what you want to do with your web service. So what you do, you need to send this envelope to the service provider. And since you're sending this whole bunch or this uh, big envelope, it requires more bandwidth. And you can see here on the right hand side that a typical SOAP envelope will have uh, some header. It will also have some body with the WSTL uh, a file which is nothing but a web service definition language so to understand how soap works you can see that you have a consumer like a service consumer who is trying to get some information from a service provider so what you would do you would send your soap request which is uh, using this xml file where you will uh, contact an endpoint uri for example to get details of a tv you will probably send this uh, model number in this particular XML definition. And then you get a SOAP response, which is nothing but again, an XML file with the details of uh, the TV model that you requested. So when you are sending this request, you are enclosing this uh, information of uh, the model and what you want to do with it in your SOAP envelope. So this is how your uh, typical SOAP uh, request will work. Now, let us now understand how REST will work. In REST, which is known as representational state transfer. It is nothing but uh, a form of uh, some architecture. It is, it, is, it is an architecture. It's not really a protocol if you compare it with SOAP. And uh, REST mostly works on HTTP. It is very important to know that uh, you can't really use uh, easily some of the pro protocols. It works mostly in most cases over HTTP. And uh, REST uses HTTP for all four CRUD operations or for all four HTTP methods known as uh, create for posting the information, uh, re reading the information, which is nothing but get, then you have update and delete. So you have create, read, update and delete. So these are the four CRUD operations and uh, these are nothing but your HTTP methods. And uh, if you compare your rest with your SOAP, you're not really sending the whole envelope. You are actually sending a postcard and we'll uh, understand how REST works uh, uh, in a minute. But uh, just, to com just to do a comparison, REST requires a lot less bandwidth. And REST permits not only XML, you can also use some other file types like JSON or you can also use a text file, for example. So you are not really, really limited to XML files. So let us now understand how the uh, how the REST will work. And if we do a comparison from the previous example of SOAP, where we have a service provider and a service consumer, we will also try to understand how REST will behave. And, and one more thing which I forgot to mention is the concept of the business logic. For example, if you remember in the SOAP based request, you are sending the whole envelope. And the business logic is not very clear because that is actually defined in the envelope itself. But when you look at the REST based request, you're actually trying to access the URI and that URI is the resource URI. And you can actually see the business logic by looking at the URI itself. So if you compare how REST will work with SOAP, we have again a consumer and we have a provider. So when you send a request, you are using a resource URI. And uh, since you're doing some retrieval of, let us say, a TV model, if we try to do the same thing using REST, you can see here that we have this URI uh, that actually talks about uh, uh, what you're trying to do using get method. So when you say get, and when you type in your uh, URI in your code, you are trying to specify the resource directly, like slash electronics, slash TV, then you are uh, using slash model number. And finally, you have uh, your actual model number. So when you try to uh, use this resource URI, you get a response back, which is nothing but a simple XML response, similar to your SOAP. But uh, if you are looking at the specific request, you are actually looking at the business logic itself. So it is actually a lightweight, uh, a lightweight request for, for retrieving, let us say a simple TV model. And let us do finally a comparison of uh, SOAP versus REST. So when you are talking about both of them, 
they are both language independent and uh, since the rest is using http most of the times you can say that the the http status codes or the status code of uh, the, the the request is something which uh, is user defined in soap you need to define your own uh, own own status code whether the request was successful or whether the request was not successful but in case of rest since it is using http you have your standard http st status codes like 100s and 200s and so on so this is something that you need to be aware of when it comes to security soap is very secure because not only it uses the enterprise level security it's its own security but uh, when it comes to banking applications they try to hide the business logic itself and they can also hide the whole envelope whereas in rest it is also secure you can also use ssl you can also use uh, uh, this uh, request the rest request uh, and send it over on uh, the uh, on SSL, you can use, of course, your HTTPS, but uh, as compared to SOAP, it is uh, slightly less secure and uh, this could be a concern for uh, very uh, very critical uh, applications uh, that are used in uh, banking because they want to hide almost everything. They don't want to leave, leave any loopholes. And when it comes to overhead, since in SOAP, we are sending the whole envelope it is definitely uh, slightly more heavier if you compare it with the rest in most cases you need to send the whole xml file and uh, whenever you're doing uh, some operation you are sending a lot of data across and that is why it uses more bandwidth whereas rest is uh, uh, is very lightweight and when it comes to strict standards we have very strict standards in soap we need to define the contract in the wsql file whereas in rest uh, it is nothing but based on http and the standards are not that strict so thank you very much for watching this video i hope uh, it was useful